Hey Clarksville First United Methodist Church, it's Pastor Heather. I want to welcome you and all of our guests to today's Sunday service on Sunday, July the 5th. I hope that each one of you has had a safe and enjoyable 4th of July weekend and that you've taken a moment to thank God for all of our many freedoms that we enjoy in the United States of America. And I hope that you have prayed for our nation this weekend. Uh, today's service I hope will be a blessing to you. Uh, we're going to begin our service today with a prayer offering that is called Heal Our Land, Lord. And so I would ask you now to prepare your hearts for worship as we pray together. God bless America. It's a prayer for grace in this day and age.
Well, today, church, as I begin our message time, I just have to confess at the outset that my heart is all over the place as this week draws to an end. My heart is heavy and my spirit is heavy and feels burdened. And I'm sad, so sad for the Crone family. And um, it's hard to even know where to begin this week. Um, with all the news in our nation right now, about 38 out of 50 states having increasing cases in the COVID virus, after all that we've been through for all these many months, it's just too much. And with all the stories of continuing political unrest, it's just too much. And then with um, the news at the end of this week of Caitlin's passing, it is absolutely too much. Devastating news and heart so sad. Our hearts are so saddened for that family. And um, I tell you, I, I had plans at the beginning of this week to do sort of a light message for this Sunday um, and celebrate the 4th and talk about freedom in Christ and do kind of a, a typical offering of a message for an Independence Day weekend. But um, the way this week has gone, it just did not feel appropriate and um, it didn't feel right in my spirit. And so as the week drew to a close, I scoured through several devotional books and I fell back on my one favorite devotional book, God Calling. And I didn't look for that day's message, but I just scoured the titles of the messages looking for something that spoke to me. And I found a devotional that I wanna share with you this morning that really spoke to me and really helped to lift my spirits. And I hope it will do yours uh, just as much good. And so this is from God Calling, and the devotional title is Hour of Need. And I just want to read this first sentence to you twice because it is so powerful and really says all that needs to be said. It says, I am your healer, your joy, and your Lord. I am your healer, your joy, and your Lord. If we could meditate, each one of us, on those words alone, all week through this coming week, I feel like it would bolster and lift our spirits. Um, I am your healer, your joy, and your Lord, your Lord. You bid me come. You cry out to me, Lord, please come to me in my hour of need. Or, Lord, please come be with my family in our hour of need. You bid me come, but do you not know that I am already here? With noiseless footsteps, I draw near to you. Your hour of need is the very moment of my coming. Could you know my love? Could you measure my longing to help you? You would know that I need no agonized pleading. Your need is my call. Your need is my call. Those are powerful words. If we could meditate on just those simple words, each and every day, recognizing and reassuring ourselves that the word of God teaches us in a hundred different ways that our need is God's call. It's this reassurance that whenever we're distressed, whenever we're uh, in a crunch, whenever we're um, feeling pressure coming from both sides, whenever we're sad, whenever we are heartbroken, whenever we are grief stricken, our need is God's call. And when he senses that we have a need, he is right there. Our call um, out to him our call out to him, our pleading agonizingly with him. It's not even necessary. It is not even necessary that we utter a word to God with our lips or that our hearts even groan because he knows our need. And when we have need, he's there. It's a simple message, but it's a profound message and one that we, I think, can oftentimes forget about or lose sight of or maybe sometimes doubt in times that are so overwhelmingly trying on our patience and on our sense of good in the world and all of those things, when we are just overwhelmed, I think we can lose sight of that promise, that truth 
It's found throughout the scriptures that our need is God's call. And when he, when we experience an, a time of need, he is there. Um, I also love this image put forth in the devotional about with noiseless footsteps, I draw near to you. There's something so gentle about that description. You know, it's sort of like when you're having like the worst day and you're sort of sitting off to yourself and your breathing is quite erratic and tears are streaming from your eyes. It's like a quiet friend just without note, without warning, without asking, just noticing from across the room that you are in need and simply coming and sitting beside you and just wrapping their arm around you or placing their hand on your leg just to let you know, I'm here. I'm with you. I'm going to be with you as you go through this struggle. I love that image. With noiseless footsteps, I draw, to me, and draw near to you. It reminds me of this biblical notion of the still small voice of God or the breath of God or the wind of the Holy Spirit. There's something gentle about it um, and quiet, you know, and that's important, I think, for us to to reckon with as we think about what a busy and noisy day and time in which we live. I mean, you can hardly go to a sacred space like church without a cell phone ringing. We're just surrounded all the time by buzzes and beeps and honks and all of that. It's so noisy. But with God, he approaches us with noiseless footsteps in the arm of a friend who notices our sadness in the, in the quiet presence of a child smiling at us when we're feeling our um, lowest, right? God's presence drawing near to, near to his children is often described in these quiet, um, gentle terms. I think especially in our time of need, our hour of need. When God's children have need of his presence, this devotional reminds us he is already there, already there. Before we've uttered a word, before anyone else in the room has noticed, God is already there. And he is already catching every one of our teardrops in his hands and pouring out his peace and his comfort into us and out all over us. That's a beautiful image to keep in mind, too, in times when we are really, really struggling. God is already there, whether rain or shine, in good times or in bad, um, no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, our very hour of need is the very call of God. And just like Matthew 10 says, uh, it says that not one sparrow falls from the ground without, from the sky without God noticing. Not one sparrow falls to the ground without God noticing. So I think it is true um, with our tears. God notices our tears, our weariness, our tiredness, our moaning. He notices them and he hears them and he feels them alongside us. I mean, if you think about it, there are so many examples of this in the scriptures. Uh, when Hagar lifted up her voice to God in her distress, he heard her cry and he drew near to her. When Hannah wept bitterly, God heard her cry and he drew near to her. When David became weary after the loss of his infant son, and as he moaned, God did not tire of hearing David's moaning. He just drew near to him. The God of all comfort keeps watch over our struggling and over our weeping. Psalm 56 says, God gathers up all of our tears. Psalm 121 says, he who watches over us will not slumber. He will not slumber. That is a beautiful image to keep in mind that God is always alert, always on guard, always on watch, no matter what all of his children all across the globe are going through. In my hour of need, in your hour of need, he's on watch, he notices. He hears and he feels alongside us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. That is the promise of scripture. So whether like me, you are still struggling day after day with the 
ever evolving news about this virus. Whether you are struggling every day with um, the ever evolving news about cries for justice in our land, in our nation, amongst our people, whether um, your heart is filled with tears and sadness over the loss of Caitlin. Remember this, hold on to this. God is our healer. He is our joy. And he is the Lord of our life. And what it means to be the Lord of someone's life is that he is the guide of our lives. He is the keeper of our lives. He is the watchman for our lives. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And he will come to us in our hour of need. May you be blessed this coming week. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now... May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.